Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me here. I'm Oliver, and today we're talking about the touch bar on the new MacBook Pros. This came in in 2016 when they really changed the whole MacBook style. A lot of people love it and a lot of people hate it. So hopefully I can make you guys like it today. There's a lot of things you can change, little tips that make it easier to use. And you also can customize all your buttons on the track bar. Yes, I said customize. It's not a third party app. It's straight in Apple. You can customize this. A lot of people do not know about this. So as you can see in the background, I have my MacBook right here. I'm gonna bring it up here and I will start showing you how to customize it. Okay, so once you grab your MacBook, you're gonna go and you're gonna open up settings and you're gonna click on your keyboard. Once you click on your keyboard, you're gonna see down here, it says customize control strip. So a lot of people completely miss that. Uh, and I mean, there's so many things that you just don't have time to see what it does. Um, but pretty much you're just gonna click on that and you're gonna see this weird thing pop up. And uh, I mean, you can't see it right now, but your control strip is like kind of vibrating. Uh, if you can see right here, this is pretty much what you're seeing. Your little strip right there is gonna be kind of vibrating just barely. And once you move your mouse, you can grab anything you want off of that. So let's do the play button. And if you pretty much just drag it down towards the touch bar, all of a sudden it pops into the touch bar. It's almost like your mouse is inside the touch bar, which honestly is really weird. And you also don't have to grab anything. You just move your mouse down and you can see it highlights any buttons. If you grab, you can pull that button out and pull it out put it back in. The other cool thing is if you go over here, you can get this default and that's pretty much what it comes with. So if you're like, oh, I just messed up my whole thing. I wanna go back to default. Also right here, if you tap on your little arrow right next to all the buttons, if you're wondering what that is, that pretty much opens up the extended buttons. So hidden buttons that you don't usually use, less used, that type of stuff. If you tap on that, now you can customize that as well. So you can see your default up here. Uh, but then you can put anything you want, brightness, keyboard, skipping, all that type of stuff. So that is really cool and it's a feature that not many people know about. And then all you do is just hit done and now your keyboard will be exactly what you customized it to. And I think that really helps because there's a lot of times there's just, there's buttons in there you're not gonna use. The Siri button, I never use that. So I pull that out of my main setup here. I put it inside the hidden buttons. So if I ever wanted to say something to Siri, then I can do that. So that's pretty cool. A lot of people did not know about that. The next thing is actually when you go to tap either on brightness or the volume, if you pretty much tap and hold, it will pop up. So instead of tapping each time, you know, you tap on your brightness and you tap each side, boom, 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 or you slide it back and forth. Pretty much all you have to do is hold down and then slide side to side. That's all you have to do. No extra lifting up, tapping again, hold down on what you want to do and slide back and forth. It doesn't even need to be on the slider. So that's one thing to make it a lot faster to adjust stuff. So if you just want to grab it, poop, poop, just like that, no big deal. Instead of tapping, tap, 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 it just makes it a lot better. Also, when you open up an application, there are a lot of features that pop up on your touch bar. So say if I open a folder or something and I start to play something, down there you can scroll through what you're playing. You can also play and pause it from down there. Uh, if you're an editor and you're editing on Final Cut Pro, you can do a lot of tool changes skimming through your timeline, all of that type of stuff right on your touch bar. It, it automatically pops right up when you open up an application that the touch bar can work with. Uh, if you're editing photos, you'll get different editing things that pop up. And if you start using that more, it makes the touch bar better. Instead of just never really thinking about the touch bar, thinking it's bad, it actually helps to use it. And a lot of times I forget to use it as well. But then I see, oh, I can just scroll through that. I don't need to use my mouse and scroll through the timeline or anything like that. It just makes it a lot faster. Also, when you go to delete something and something pops up and says confirm, just reach over and tap that. It's kind of like having a touchscreen computer, but it's not. It's kind of like their middle ground from going from no touchscreen to touchscreen. 
Honestly, I hate touchscreen computers because your screen gets covered in fingerprints and I honestly couldn't stand it. But this kind of is in the middle ground. It's a touchscreen, but it's not. It kind of helps, but it doesn't. So hopefully that customization really helped you and a couple of those little tips there. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something from this and liked this video, consider subscribing and also giving that video a like. And I am so close to a thousand subscribers, so thank you all of my subscribers and everybody that watches. Uh, hopefully I'm making a difference and helping you guys uh, get through tech and, and products and uh, we'll see you back in another video. Also, quick little side note, if you knew how to customize the touch bar, leave a comment because I'd like to know how many people knew how to do that and how many people didn't. Thank you guys and we'll see you back in another one.